As a software engineer of five plus years, I thought I knew how to build apps efficiently, but then AI came and changed everything. I'm better and faster than I've ever been before. Here's how I built my latest app in less than two weeks using AI. Let's talk about the tech stack and the development process for it. Hey, if you're new here, I'm Ramain and I build simple and minimalistic apps. I just finished building my latest app. It's called Quake Pack. It's a packing list app. It's very straightforward, very simple. You basically create trips, add items to those trips, and you check them off. It helps you make sure you have all the things you need when you're traveling to the place, but also repacking for when you're coming back. App itself is very simple, nothing crazy. But what is crazy is how I built it. Let's talk about why I built the app. Generally, my idea of building apps are to make some money. Um, but I also want to tie it into my personal problems that I might have. And that was definitely one of them for this app. Because about a couple months back, I had to go to New Orleans for work and I forgot my earphones and it was excruciating. Okay, it wasn't that bad. I had my laptop so I could still make it work. But I wanted to build an app because of that reason. I wanted to keep it very simple, all local, only on the phone, no database, no servers, no complexity. Keep it simple, make it out within two weeks. So yeah. As someone who wants to build a lot of apps and products, but also have a full-time job, I can only dedicate about an hour or two a day towards my apps. And before AI, it would take me two, three months minimum to get an app live. That's not just because of AI though, it's because I didn't have the product mindset. I didn't know how to be a good builder in terms of like building products quickly, the MVPs and all that. But now because of AI though, I can build something from first code to being live on the App Store and Play Store under less than a week. Yes, some people can vibe code it in a day or two, but I'm not there. But two weeks is more than fast enough for what I'm trying to achieve. It's crazy. So let me show you guys the workflow for how I achieve that. For Quick Pack, the tech stack I'm using is React Native with Expo. That's my go-to for any mobile apps. It's a cross-platform uh, code base that can be deployed on both iOS and Android. I love using Tailwind CSS, so I'm using Native Win, which is the React Native version and makes life easy to style the apps and components. I build my own components, not using any component library. No database or at least cloud-based database. Everything is local to the device only. I give the user to option to export and import the data. I'm using React Native MMKV, fantastic package, makes data so fast to load the app and everything. Other than that, the only other two packages I'm using are Revenue Cat for setting up the paywall. Love Revenue Cat makes it so easy to set everything up and post talk for analytics. Post talk is fantastic. I've been using it for all my other apps and I really enjoy it. So where does the AI come in in my tech stack? The biggest thing I use is Cursor, which is a port of VS Code and it has AI agents built in. Much faster and better in my opinion than GitHub Copilot. Um, there's another kit on the block right now called Cloud Code, which I haven't had the chance to test. I've been hearing really good things. And another one is Windsurf, which also I haven't tested. But Cursor has been great for me, hasn't had any issues, and it's been really helpful. So let's take a look at some examples with Cursor. Hey guys, so wanted to show you guys on the screen what I have. This is Cursor. This is a code editor that's basically um, a fork of the VS Code and they have their AI agent built in, which I have open right here. And this is my code structure for my current app, Quick App, which I have open right here. Cursor itself is free, but free tier doesn't really give you a lot. So I am paid um, doing the $20 per month paid subscription. They have a $200 per paid month subscription as well, which is a bit more expensive and has some more features. But for me, the $20 per month is more than enough. Um, it's been very helpful for me. So just to show you a quick demo of how I would use it, for example, right now in my app, when I press get started, I start my onboarding and I have these logos or images scaling up. Let's ask Cursor to do the reverse where they scale down from zero opacity and scale down basically. So I know where my files are, which are in my app uh, onboarding page and they are rendering multiple onboarding screens or components and they're over here. So I can um, attach those to the agent and let them know. So for example, I would say, hey, make my onboarding. Okay, so I wrote down the task or what I want the AI agent to do with the prompt. I'm asking it to scale down for the onboarding welcome. So let's see how it performs. 
Okay, so it's done. Let's take a look. So this is the update it's made. It's not a lot. And let's test it out and see if it actually works. And it does scale down from 1 to 1.5, I think. 1.5 to 1. But let's make a little update. So, so I'm asking it to fix the opacity issue. So initially when it's scaled up, it's going to be at opacity of 0 and I'm going to bring down to opacity of 1 once it's done scaling down. So it feels like it's coming down from nowhere and a better looking animation basically. Let's see what it does with that. Okay, now I can see it has set up new code for me. I, ha I kind of have an idea what it's trying to do and I'm just kind of taking a quick look and making sure it's okay and let's try it out. And there we go, it's coming down and from zero opacity to opacity one and scale of 1.5 to one. So it looks pretty cool. But that's the general gist of how I use cursor. Um, basically use that methodology for everything else. I definitely do a much more prompting and with more structure. This was just for example. Um, but that's how I've been using my AI agents to build multiple apps and you can do the same. But just so everyone understands, AI isn't magic. It's a black box and we don't know exactly what's going on under the hood, but AI does not know how to think. It's ingested billions of data and based on that, it will know what to spit out in terms of what the next word should be. But that also can lead to a lot of problems. It can cause errors and write code that will cause bugs. So your goal is to refine it, prompt it to be better. For me, I set up cursor rules, which are rules you can set up for a cursor so it knows exactly what to do. But I also make sure my prompts are good. For example, don't prompt that, hey, I want this component and it should do this. No, be more clear, be a little extra. Hey, I want this component, it should do this, this, this. This might be an edge case where it might be having an issue and this is how my user is gonna use it. That will give it clear definition of how the component should be written so it can write code for the edge cases as well. The AI agent is your prayer programmer. You're coding and prompting in parallel together. The workflow is prompt, review, refine, and repeat. It's supposed to be collaborative. Imagine you're conducting an AI orchestra. AI has changed the landscape of coding significantly. This transition is going on right now. But it's not just about building and shipping the apps faster. It's about lowering the technical execution barrier. I can focus a lot more on the user journey, decision makings, and just building a good product for the user. I don't have to think about the code as much. The bottleneck has shifted from, can I build this to, should I build this? That's a great problem to have. But other than that, Quick Pack is live on both App Stores and Play Store. Please check it out if you get a chance. If you have any thoughts or feedback, let me know. If you want me to make any specific kind of videos in the future, also let me know. But yeah, thank you so much for watching.